Hey guys, so this video is about titration. So the definition of titration is it's a method or process of determining the concentration of a dissolved substance in terms of the smallest amount of reagent of known concentration required to bring about a given effect in reaction with a known volume of the test solution. Well, that's a lot of words, but that just means that we react <clears throat> um, one solution whose concentration we don't know with another whose we do know. And knowing the stoichiometry, this allows us to, con to, that, to calculate the concentration of the unknown solution. So let's do an example. Um, now, um, it looks like this, um, a basic titration. If you were able to go into the lab and do it, you would actually be doing it a, one a lot like this yourself. Um, this instrument up here is called a burette. Um, this is a burette clamp. And this flask is called an Erlenmeyer flask. And what we do is, we have one solution in the burette and a different solution in the flask. Um, pretty common would be to have a solution of a base like sodium hydroxide up in the burette and a solution of an acid um, down in the flask. The idea is we know the molarity or the concentration of one of these two, which basically means that we know the moles. Um, and if we, um, we react them with each other and we need some way to know when we have reached the point where we have added exactly enough of one to use up the other, but no more. Um, that's, um, that's called the equivalence point, that point. And one method to do that is um, using what's called an indicator. Um, this indicator right here, it's called phenolphthalein. Um, and what it does is it changes color from the solution's color from clear to a light red once you've gotten to the point where you've added just enough um, just enough moles of one to use up the moles of the other. And let's look at an example. So there's a definition of equivalence point when you've added exactly enough of one reactant um, in the burette to use up the other reactant in the flask, but no more. Um, so the idea is if we know the, the stoichiometry, the, we have the balanced equation that describes the reaction between their two reactants. Knowing the moles of one at the equivalence point allows us to easily calculate the moles of the other. Um, <clears throat> remember, if you know the volume and molarity, then you know the moles. Um, also, if you know the grams and the molar mass, you know the moles. So here's an example. Um, this is a pretty typical um, titration that we would do in the lab. Uh, the idea is we want to find the concentration or molarity of sodium hydroxide in a solution if it takes 23.28 milliliters of the sodium hydroxide solution to neutralize to reach the equivalence point of 0.9959 grams of KHP. Now, a couple things. Um, this, the picture here is that um, the sodium hydroxide solution would be up in here, up here in the burette. We would weigh out the KHP, the, um, which is a monoprotic acid. I'll talk about that in a moment. We would weigh that out, put it in the flask, add some deionized water, and it would dissolve. So now we have a solution down here of an acid. We have a base up in the burette. Um, so KHP is what we call a monoprotic acid. This ends up being the formula for it. But the only important thing we really care about is um, in an acid-base reaction between sodium hydroxide and KHP, there's only one proton, one hydrogen, that reacts with the hydroxide. And so the balanced equation looks like this right here. Um, one mole of sodium hydroxide reacts with one mole of KHP, makes a mole of water, and a mole of the salt over here. Um, but really, the only thing for this stuff we care about, guys, is that it's a one-to-one -one mole ratio between sodium hydroxide and KHP. So, that means that at the equivalence point, we'll have added the same number of moles of sodium hydroxide from the burette as there were moles of KHP down in the solution. Now, see that our goal, right, is to find the molarity or concentration of sodium hydroxide. We already know the volume, so that means if we can get the moles, we can calculate the molarity quite easily by using the definition of molarity. We already know the moles of KHP because we know the mass and we can get the molar mass. So grams over the molar mass gives us the moles. So right, see this? We know moles of KHP, how many moles are down there in that flask. At the equivalence point, we'll have added the same number of moles of sodium hydroxide as there are moles of KHP in that flask. So that means at that point, and that point only, we will know moles of sodium hydroxide, which allows us to calculate the molarity. Now, watch out for one thing, guys, okay? Listen to this. If this is not a one-to-one -one mole ratio, you have to take that into account. Let's say this was a, it was a two-to-one. Then we, we would say that at the equivalence point, 
um, the moles of sodium hydroxide is equal to one half the moles of KHP. One mole of sodium hydroxide equals two moles of KHP. So just watch out for that, okay? So <clears throat> here's how we do the calculation. Um, definition of concentration or molarity is moles over liters. Uh, because it's a one-to-one -one mole ratio, one mole of, uh, the moles of sodium hydroxide is equal to the moles of KHP. And we were given the liters of solution, the bottom part here. Uh, we were told 23.28 milliliters, which moved the decimal over three, it's 0 0.02328 liters. To get the moles of KHP, we just take the mass, divide by the molar mass. Okay, this number right here, 204.222, I got that by calculating the molar mass of KHP. I do the division, I get the moles of KHP, which is equal to the moles of sodium hydroxide. So I just put that up here, divide by the volume, get my answer, round, and there we go, 0 0.2095 molar sodium hydroxide. That's all there is to it.